Hi there, Dave here in the IQ Center with another Cinema 4D tutorial. We've had a few requests to make um, uh, bone marrow or connective tissue, some kind of interlocking fibers. Um, and so uh, there's, a, there's a technique that I came across that works for both. This is based on a tutorial that was done by uh, Joel Dubin. Um, it's updated a little bit to, to use uh, the volume builder and instead of metaballs and uh, a random field to generate the randomness. So let's jump into Cinema 4D. I'll show you what we're going to make. And, and we can talk a little bit about how we're going to build this. OK, so this is what we're after. This is In this configuration, it sort of looks like a bundle of collagen fibers, although this could be uh, a vasculature. <laughs> it's it's um, just a bunch of fibers that are interlocking. What's great about Cinema 4D is that this is totally editable. Even after we're um, at this point, we can go into the volume measure and we can change its change its size. We can make it bigger or smaller um, uh, and, and change the noise that's generating this shape. Uh, so Let's uh, jump into a new project, and I'll show you how, how we make something like this. OK, so we're going to do this with splines and a volume builder. So the first thing we need is a, is a spline. So we're going to um, jump into the front view and just use the spline pen to make a spline that has a few segments. Press Escape to end the spline. We don't want this to be adaptive. We want this to be uniform, the, the subdivisions between them. Um, we may need to even up this later. We'll, we'll, we'll try that a little bit later. So we've got a spline. I'm going to jump back into our perspective view. And then we need a cloner. So we'll go up to uh, MoGraph, cloner, and we'll drag our spline into the cloner. Uh, and what we want is not a linear, but we want a grid array. For the type of cloner. And uh, to make this, we're going to make um, we're going to make it kind of condensed in one direction and uh, um, and spread out in another. So we want um, let's make I don't know I don't know eight or nine in this direction, and then um, and then let's bring it together. So we'll bring the the X and the Z dimensions down a little bit. We kind of want to end up with a with a what looks like a square from the front. So when I rotate around toward the front, we want this to look kind of like a square, and we want this to be kind of dense. This is going to be our our uh, our thin bundle of collagen fibers or connective tissue. Okay, so um, now we need to randomize the the shape we need to get this we need to get these things to be bent in random directions so we're going to do that with a with a deformer called a displacer so we're going to drop a displacer in here and drag it onto the spline and nothing happens cuz it's not uh, um it's not connected to anything yet um so the displacer is is controlled using color and so um and the color is su supplied from this shading tab. So we click the shader. <clears throat> One way to do this is with uh, just by using noise in this shader. But we'd have to put it in a couple different places. So we're going to use a little bit different thing. We're going to we're going to choose a we're going to displace it with a color, and then we're going to affect the color with a fall off deformer or the, with a with a fall off field. So um, in the shader, we want custom shader, and then the type of shader is going to be color. And in the color field, we want it to just be white. So now, uh, the way a deformer works, or the way the, sh the uh, displacer works, is that um, the grayscale level will define how much strength gets applied to this. So right now, we have it. Um, we have to change a couple of things here uh, in the object tab. Uh, it's displacing 10 centimeters, and if you see, it's displacing in some direction. I'm not sure what. Um, uh, why it's going back, but it's it's because it's it's the vertex normal. It's going in the direction of the vertex normal. What we want to do is change that to planar, and and we're going to choose the x direction. So um, it's going to displace in the x direction this amount based on the color. So 
Um, right now it's white, so every one gets displaced exactly the same amount, and it's exactly whatever I have set here. So <clears throat> now we want to um, affect the shader with a fall off field. So we want to say we want to use a uh, a random field to affect this. Now you can see this has already done something here. Um, we've got a random field affecting how much of this white shader gets applied to our to our field and it's going to um, deform it in the X direction. Okay. So there's a couple things we need to change. Um, uh, this random field is uh, affecting our object but it's the, the noise is a little too high frequency and it's also affecting everything the same if you look around you can see that every one of these is exactly the same so the way we um, make the randomness affect these differently is to select the uh, the the field up here in the object manager and instead of space field we want space global now you can see it's affecting each one differently. Each one of these is a little bit different. Um, and we're also seeing that at, at each subdivision in our, in, our, um, in our spline, there's a, a, it's not smoothly deforming. And so that's because we don't have enough, um, we don't have enough subdivisions in our spline. So if I change this up, the subdivision. You can see we can start to get a more accurate representation of the noise, but also the noise is way too high frequency for what we're doing. So what we need to do is go to the random field in the object manager and change the global scale to be much higher, something like 600 or 600 to 1000. And now you can see that we're we're getting smooth, and and now that we have these smooth um, uh, curves in our in our spline, we can back off the number of subdivisions to save ourselves a little computer power here. So let's do like twenty subdivisions. Okay, now uh, this is looking pretty good, except I want um, maybe to make the displacer, displace a little more. So I'm going to go to object and change the displacement a little bit more. Now we're starting to see what we're after here. Okay, but we still have one problem. It's only displacing in the X direction. There's not a, there's not a way to use a single displacer and displace it in two directions, at least as far as I know. So we need to have two displacers. So we're going to use this displacer is doing a um, displacement in the x direction. If I hold the control key down and click and drag this displacer, uh, wait, let me redo that. I want it to still be in there. So now we have two displacers displacing the, the same amount. And I and I'm going to just just delete this field. Then I'm going to go into the copy of the displacer in its fall off field and drag the random field from the first displacer into that. So now we have the same random field in both. Um, but we do need to change one thing because uh, this displacer needs to be um, not going in the same direction. It needs to be going in plus Z. So displacer 1 is going in plus Z. The original displacer is going in plus x, and if we turn it around now, you can see it's being displaced in in both directions. So now it's it is very random looking in every direction. Okay, and then to adjust, you know, how much that's displacing, we can go into each displacer and adjust its the amount, and we can go into the random field and change the noise and how the noise looks. So we can go into the field and we can change the noise type. Uh, this Perlin noise works really good for this. Um, you can try around, try different noises, but some of them are very um, angular. So if you do like, a, I don't know, Veronoi, it's it's not, not quite right. There's a lot of different noises to try out, but um, I like the I like the Perlin for this. And, uh, and then we can also up the, the scale if we want it to look 
uh, more kinky or more elongated. So I think for this, numbers between 500 and 1,000 work pretty good. Okay, so now we gotta put some volume on this and we do that with a, with a volume builder. So up under the volume menu, we select volume builder and then just drag the cloner right into the volume builder. And you see um, it gives us a bunch of voxels. It's kind of hard to tell what exactly is going on, but um, we do need to make this voxel size slightly smaller. The voxel size, I don't know, down to about five or so. And then to see what this is going to look like as a mesh, we put a volume mesher in the scene, drag the volume builder into the volume mesher, and there we go. That is pretty close to what we're looking for. We want these to be close, maybe touching a little bit. Um, we could, at this point, we can go into the cloner and adjust the spacing. We're gonna make the, um, the Z spacing a little closer and make the X spacing a little bit closer. And again, we want this to be kind of a kind of looking like a square. To hide those purple lines, that's the random field. Um, so we can turn it off in the editor and we won't see those. Okay, that looks pretty good. I might want my um, random my uh, displacer in the plus X to be a little bit larger. There we go. I want these things to kind of be touching so that they uh, kind of glue together. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It's roughly a square. So, And I, and I, I want it to be a square because I want to duplicate this and rotate it 90 degrees so we can get more, more fibers and a more um, dense network. To do that, I'm going to Click, control, click, and drag the cloner up. So if I control, click, and make a copy of the cloner in the um, in the same volume builder, it makes a copy, and I can drag this out. So one thing I've noticed is that this new cloner comes in a little bit smaller, and uh, and there are two places where this where the where the volume can be adjusted, where the thickness of these fibers can be adjusted. One is in the volume mesher with this voxel range threshold. The other place is in the volume builder. And uh, sometimes when you duplicate these things, they come in with a different, so, so you can see this cloner is has a radius of nine centimeters. This cloner has a radius of 16 or 15. So if I click here, I can, I can adjust this one make it 15 to match the other one and now they're the same but actually I kind of like it a little bit smaller so I'm gonna make this uh, say 12 and I'll make the other one 12 okay and then we'll take uh, this cloner and I'm gonna press the R key to rotate it 90 degrees hold the shift key down You'll also notice that's kind of interesting that the um, the shape of this changes as I slide it through the field. the 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 randomness of this uh, of this cloner is being, or the randomness of this um, system is being affected by the field. The field is stationary, and I can move my objects through it. It kind of has kind of a neat effect. It kind of like looks like it's swimming through the through the field. Anyway, so I'm going to drag this so that they're roughly on top of each other and then I can rotate this around. And you can see this is a very nice looking, you know, dense network. If you want this to look a little sparser, uh, you can click the volume measure and slide this one way or the other. This looks more like blood vessels. This looks more like bone marrow. Okay, and so, so now after the fact, like I said, we can we can adjust the, the thickness with the volume measure. We can also adjust the noise um, by uh, selecting the random field and adjusting the 
noise parameters. We can change the type of noise. We can change the scale. Now we have two of them, so we've got to adjust it twice. But maybe it looks, maybe you want to adjust it only in one direction. So if we up that, we can get it a more a smooth look. And that's it. It's not very, um, it's not very heavy on um, polygons. If we look at uh, lot garage shading bus lines. This is this is a pretty uh, a pretty low density mesh, uh, and it renders pretty nice. And so that can be, if we, if you want to make this, you want to um, put this inside of another object and cut it off, you can just uh, make it editable after the fact. If we just press C, it just makes this into a, into a regular mesh. Okay, so that's it for um, creating a mesh of fibers. Um, thanks for watching.